Good day. My name is Leo Gilling from leogilling.com and also from Facebook, from Facebook's jamaicans.com. That's jamaicans.com on Facebook. And I'm also from leogilling.com bringing to you some of the most interesting people and interesting places from Jamaica. This week we have uh, a video with Diana McCauley um, who has a a petition out to earn 15,000 signatures to sit to bring it to the prime minister to for to, to take action so uh, Diana on this video coming up will be talking about the cockpit country how to save the cockpit country she needs that 15,000 signatures last time I spoke with her we only had 5,000 signatures so please go ahead watch this video listen to Diana and please, 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 please sign the petition. Very interesting. We should not be having petition to save the co cockpit country. However, we do. And we need to do something about it. We don't want bauxite to damage our country any more than it has. So watch this video and I'll see you at the end. Good day. My name is Leo Gilling. I am here today with Miss... This is Diana Macaulay, and the name Macaulay means a lot to me. Um, Macaulay happens to be, and I think I'm right, that this is the bus company that used to run for back and forth through <laughs> Rocco right? Yes, that's right. Country buses. <laughs> country bus. Red country bus. I'm a, I'm a big red one. Mm -hmm. yeah, a little bit of silver on it, but let, 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 let me tell everybody, Macaulay's bus had everything to do with my mother's success as a as the first higgler on the North Coast back in the, in the, in the 60s. Because wow. that's where we, we would take our Dulcimina um, bus, the, the, the Dulcimina, uh, and, and take the bus, and it drop us, take us from Rokobesa all the way up to Retrieve Content, and then in the evening we take the other one going the other way. So it's, it's very nice to meet you. Me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, away with McDonald's uh, bus. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about Diana Macaulay. Okay, um, I was born here. My father was a figured runway Macaulay's bus, buses. Um, I had a long um, business career in the private sector. And then in about the late 1980s, sometime after Hurricane Gilbert, I started to notice that places I loved as a child were disappearing. They were being degraded or closed off to Jamaicans, um, and so I got concerned about the environment. And I didn't know anything about the environment. I, yeah, I had a business degree, but I a reader, mm -hmm. and so I started reading about it. And the more I learned, the more concerned I became. And eventually I convinced a gentleman named Omer Silva. He was a public health specialist here in Jamaica, and he took me around to places I, as a lifelong Kingstonian, had never visited, like the Riverton Dome sewage plants that didn't work. Um, another another sewage plant on the waterfront of Kingston, and I was really horrified. And I didn't, I didn't understand how things could be so bad, you know. And the the Harborview sewage plant, which is another place where we hadn't worked at that stage, hadn't worked in ten years, mm -hmm. and the untreated sewage was just flowing across the beach into the sea. And I just thought, well, this is really bad, you know. And someone should do something about it. And you know, that's easy to think, but then it's a step to say that someone should be you. Oh, yes. So I took pictures of these things I'd seen and I invited my friends and business colleagues to see them and decided to form an environmental group. And so JET was formed in 1991. That's Jamaica Environment Trust. Environment Trust. Yeah. So, so Diana, tell us, what is a cockpit country? What, what's the, what, what, what are we looking at when we talk about the cockpit country? So I think a cockpit country is Jamaica's heartland. So it's this large forested, still forested area in the west central interior of the island. It runs across four or five parishes, little piece in St. Anne, bigger piece in St. James, most of it in Trelawney, a little bit to the south in St. Elizabeth. And it's this, it's this is a very important place for Jamaican heritage, Jamaican culture, because that is where the Maroon Wars were fought, and where the Maroons fought the British to a treaty in 1738, 1739, around there. So it's a symbol for us of struggle and resistance and triumph. And strength. You know, strength, yes. yes, yeah. yes, yes. So it's got this important historical aspect. Um, and then these, this large forest sits over an enormous underground lake, underground water, from which the major rivers in the west 
flow. So if you make a list of all the rivers, the springs, the streams, the wellings, the ponds, all the different kinds of little rivers and stuff in Coffee Country, it runs to 32. And the 32 of them feed into these four major rivers that come out of Tell me the, back, tell me the, the Martha Bray's one of them. So Martha Bray's one, Rio Bueno, <laughs> Great River, and Black Rio River. Rio Bueno also? Yes, that Rio Bueno oh. is at the eastern end. Is at the eastern end, yeah. The eastern end. Oh, okay, okay. So, and, and it's very, very complicated. If you read a hydrology study of Coffee Country, it will describe how these small streams rise in a certain place and then go back underground in another place to rise in a different place again, where they have a different name. And then they flow for a while and then they go underground again. Mm -hmm. so it's a very complex um, hydrological regime. Mm -hmm. But it's got this incredibly important water resource for Jamaica. It supplies about 40% of the Western needs. 40%? Yeah. And about 40% of our available underground water sources. So, you know, some sources of water in Jamaica are for overgrown. Right. But yes. some is from this underground water. Right. And underground water is really important because it's very hard to pollute right. if you leave it alone. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll get to that yes. part. Yeah. And it doesn't evaporate, right? right? If you think of having... Because there was no sunlight came exactly. taking it yeah. So yes. it's really, in a very real way, it's water in the bank. Pure, yes. And if the climate change projections for Jamaica are to be realized our freshwater resources will fall by about 40 percent we will really need coffee country i mean lastly i have to say about the plants and animals that live, live there um, it has this really high endemism which means plants and animals that are found there and nowhere else in the world are you kidding me yeah so there are even plants that are found on one hill in coffee country and no other hill wow. uh, i was doing a study recently no, I was not doing a study, I was reading and found after um, Professor Rosalia Hamilton said to me that she's doing a gender based violence thing. That's why I'm not here. Okay. And so she said to me that there's a township in the cockpit country, I think it's called Flagstaff. Flagstaff? Flagstaff. Something like that, yeah. And they have not had not one murder in 50 years. Really? I didn't yes. know that about See, I'm teaching you. Yes, yeah. so really always happy to learn. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, and so, um, uh, to be, and so uh, that is something to brag about mm -hmm. because then we can use, we, we are using the drum, drums for life um, theme using Congo drum, bongo drums to shift uh, um, behave, behaviors in a township called. Uh, Salt Spring in Montego Bay. Okay. So, so they're using. They're saying, okay, if Flagstaff can do it, let's shoot for the stars. From, from you know. So that's that's why I'm here. So I'm I'm happy to hear that you've done all your geological, if I'm saying the right word, uh, research, and you can educate me about 32 little streams and tributaries and stuff that ends up in four major rivers. And that's that's big time stuff. What is the threat? So the threat is from bauxite mining. Um, Are we still having bauxite here? There is some, still some bauxite here. We have two new players in the bauxite industry this is in the last few years. Um, they, JISCO, which stands for Jinqua Iron and Steel, has taken over the Alcart plant in Manchester. Mm -hmm. And a new company called New Day Aluminium, which bought Naranda, which was in, on the North Coast. Okay. And what we believe is, and in fact have seen, is that the government has guaranteed a certain amount of bauxite to those companies. What we don't know is where the bauxite is to come from, but there is a fear that it's come from in coffee country. And in fact, the question of bauxite mining in coffee country goes back to 2006, when the government did issue prospecting licenses for bauxite in parts of coffee country, which is how we then got involved. But that don't make any sense though. I, you know, make no it doesn't sense. make sense to me, but you know, that, you know, there are these economic realities. There is this push for economic development and jobs, and I don't think there is a is a proper accounting of what we would lose if we mined coffee country and what we would gain. I don't think that the, the maths are being done correctly. I mean, there's no there's no math needed either. I mean, <laughs> the, the thing is, if you think about it, with the kind of the kind of um, natural. Uh, resources that we have at cockpit, there's no reason to even think it. Uh, we have uh, some historical value there, the same thing that we call strength and vigor and all that, and you know, and and um, and, and the fact that we have those those, those rivers that, that that that's that's 
giving us stuff, there's no reason why anybody should put that on. Why, why, would, why would we need a, a petition for that? That don't make any sense. Yeah. One of, well, one of the issues you see is this question of where exactly is half the country. Yes. And so since 2006, that question has been, been made up for debate. And JET worked with a group of many individuals and, and organizations formed into a loose sort of coalition called Cop the Country Stakeholders Group back in 2006. And after a very extensive consultation between us, we proposed a boundary. Other, other agencies have proposed boundaries, so I think the government in the end had ended up with about seven different boundaries that were proposed for Cop the Country. And the idea was, once you settle on a boundary, you would protect it by law, and then what we want is for it to be closed to mining and quarrying. Uh -huh. Okay, so what would be the, bond, the farthest boundary to the east and the farthest Well, boundaries? if you ask us, it's, <laughs> yes. you know, it would take in a, the real winner in the east oh, and, okay. and the, the, um, the, the forested area outside the ring road to the west, which is where places like Flagstaff Flag and Alfong are, okay. and then even quite far south, almost to the, up to the Appleton Valley in the right, south. Right. But that has not been agreed, okay. and in fact the government has still not, after all these years, 10 years now, declared a boundary for Cockpit Country. So that's one of the things the petition is trying to get to happen. That people will say, look, come on, you've, you've now had all the information, they've gotten these submissions from various people, including the University of the West Indies. They did a consultation with people of Cockpit Country and broadly Jamaicans in 2013. And a big report was done by the University of the West Indies, which recommended you know, type of boundary with a core section and an outer boundary and a transition zone and also unequivocally stated that there should be no mining in the country, that the people of the area did not want it. Um, so, but they haven't acted. You know, that was in 2013 and the state has not yet acted. We think the decision about where to allow mining is imminent with these two new players I mentioned. Therefore, this is why we started a campaign now to try and influence what decision is made. All right, and so, and so then um, we have we still have a lot of people living among inside inside the country. Right, about seventy thousand people. Seventy thousand? Yeah, live along what is called the Ring Road. So, if you look at a map, you will see the forested area, and then you will see there's a road that runs almost around the Cockpit Country. So it's mm -hmm. a difficult. It's a difficult. You know place to get around because you have to travel a long way around the outside to get to But well, you know how Jamaican people are, they, you, you're not moving them unless you're, you're actually excavating them, <laughs> you know? So, so I can't see, really I can't see, the, see us allowing, I don't even know why this comes on the, on the, on the, on the, on the, on the desk anyway for somebody to sign. That, that don't make any sense. But anyway, let's, let's move on. Um, and, and I'm sure that people out there in social media. By the way, once I get this, I'm going to blast this across That's social really media, right? And so, uh, you know, we're going to get, yesterday I did, what did we do? We did, we, we put in uh, a, a video of drummers from the cockpit country. Oh, that would be fantastic. Right? Yeah. And we, I loaded it up to jamaicans.com and within eight hours I had 2,500 people viewing it. You know, this morning I looked at it, it was gone over 3,200. So, so this is going to be the same and so we i i would love to be able to to to, to guarantee you something but I, I need to need to know who can sign this petition okay so we, we the petition is something new it's a new initiative by jamaica house to essentially allow jamaicans to engage with their government they have a similar thing in the u.s right it has a very steep target we have to get fifteen thousand signatures by the end of this month by September 30. By the end of September, we need 15,000 signatures and it's electronic. All electronics, we, we got to get on there and, and sign. Right. Please go ahead. And we have, now we have about 5,700, so we still have a ways to go. Still got a good, that's a good number. When did you start? Um, we started the 12th of August. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, the, the Marcos so Garvey. It comes at the 21st. Anyway. The so Marcos Garvey, the Marcos Garvey petition didn't do much until the last weekend, but right. they got 26,000 in like five days. Right. Right? So we can do this. Yes, I mean, <laughs> we hope we can. What's the website? So, so what we did was because the website portal is a complicated URL, we have now a safecockpitcountry.org website. Okay. So the easiest thing for anyone to do is to go onto that website 
and it will give you some background, some of the background I just explained to you, okay, there's some images there. If you really wanted to get into more detailed information about this, there's some information up there and there's a link to the petition. So save the cockpit so country. Save cockpit no, country. Save cockpit country dot org. Org. Yeah. Yes. Save cockpit country dot org. Please go on, read what you need to do. But does that have a link to sign or what? Yes, it has a link to sign. It says, how, how do you get involved? Do you want to join the campaign? And when you go there, it says sign here. It gives okay. you about five or six things to do. Okay. The right. first one is sign. Okay. Um, the, little, the little complexity about signing is after you sign, it will tell you that you have to click on a link that comes in your email. Oh, okay, but that's okay. Yeah, but some people have said that email has gone straight to their spam folder. Oh. So if you don't see the email, check your spam folder. Are you supposed to respond to that email again? You're supposed to click on a link that's in the email. Oh, yes, inside the email, just right. to make and sure. Then, and then it'll tell you, thank you, your signature has oh. been uploaded. Right, that's, that's a signature. Yeah, okay. It's a pretty standard thing, but you know, this is the first time Jamaica House is doing this. Yes. So I think there have been some glitches. Okay. So, but persevere, if one day it doesn't happen, let us know. We then get in touch with Jamaica House and we say to them, look, this is not working. Initially, when we put it up, it didn't work on a mobile phone. Oh. But, you know, because people told us that we got in touch with them and they made it known so it's working on a mobile phone. So we're essentially testing this method for being in touch with the government on this very important issue. So the 15,000 people must come from Jamaica or they can so, go from all over? So what the petition site says is that they must be Jamaican citizens. I am one. Yes. So then, <laughs> so then I thought, well, okay, suppose you're a Jamaican citizen, but you're not here. Yes. You know, can you still sign? So I called up Jamaica House, and I think they want people with Jamaican connections. Right. You know, because you can, if you, if you get a petition site from Change.org or Avaz or these other places, you can get hundreds of thousands of people who have never been here, right. you know, have, know nothing about the place. And I don't think that's what they want. Right, right. So I think we've been telling people, if you are Jamaican, you have a Jamaican connection, you're a Jamaican citizen living somewhere else, or you're not a Jamaican citizen, but you're a resident here. And you've been, we've, we've had people contact us who have been resident, resident here for 30 years. Uh -huh. So you feel a strong connection to the yes. place, then please sign. And then, and then have you had any problems aside from the, the spam? Have you had any problems with anyone calling in and saying, I, I can't? I can. Yeah, one, we had a couple of complaints a few days ago about people when they hit the submit button, the whole screen went white. Oh. So we have had those kinds of complaints, but the majority, I mean, we've had 5,700 people signed and it's, it's probably under 20 that have had an issue. Mm -hmm. So please try and if you do have problems, let us know and try again. Okay, Keep okay. trying. And, and, and you're going to send me some 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 stuff, right? To, to so that I can send right across, um, uh, um, send right across social media. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I'm not, I, I'm not sure what it says. It says, it says, end with Jamaica land resort of life. <laughs> I want, you know, we engaged a, uh, a conversation today and you said something that was really, really nice and I said, I want it on camera, mm -hmm. okay? And, and I'm not so sure what it was. What, what, what was that? So we were talking about, you know, how people feel about Jamaica That's right. and you were telling me how people outside of Jamaica, people living elsewhere have these very strong feelings in their hearts towards yes. Jamaica and my perspective is that that is true that there are many things we love about Jamaica with, and being Jamaican, you know, and with, I would include in it the weather, the food, often men tell me the women, often women tell me the men, the <laughs> music, our athletes, our lifestyle, our friends, you know, the kind of laid back approach. There's this long list of things we love about being Jamaican and Jamaican and living in Jamaica. But I think we don't really love the land. And I think okay. if you look around at the way we treat it, you know, the way we throw garbage everywhere, cut down trees, set it on fire, dirty up the sea, I think we, we don't really love Jamaica, the actual place. And I, when I think about it, I can sort of understand why. Yeah. Because in a lot of cases, a lot of Jamaica is denied to a yeah. lot of our people. You know, they, they, they don't feel like they have a stake. And there are places they can't go to if you take the tourist in, industry, which has essentially taking over the best beaches and most of the coastline in Jamaica. Jamaicans feel left out, you know? So I think there is something we have to grapple with because being Jamaican also means 
being connected to the place, a physical place, a mountains, a sea, a flatland, the rivers. That's it's our home place. And we, ha and we have to love it in our heart and therefore not want to see it destroyed, see it paved over, see it become like everywhere else. It's funny you say that because a lot of us, a lot of us in the diaspora remember Jamaica as it was, as it was, <laughs> as it was right? And, and they do remember the physical land, yes. but that is no longer there. No. The, way, the way we are accustomed. And what she's say, also saying here, people, is that the, a lot of the beach fronts that we were accustomed to going to sometimes, no, it's no longer available to us. So we can't get a chance to love that. <laughs> if we're not paying a lot of money to go to the hotels, yeah. we're not being, being able to see it. But, um, and, and you should take a look at the cockpit country. You should take a look at the Blue Mountains because those, those type of, of sightseeing mean a lot to, to the love of, of your, you know, I, I live in California for 30 years, mm -hmm. and one of my pet peeve is that as I drive along the coast of California, there are no trees. There are not enough trees. And if, if I see a tree, and it's supposed to be green, it's gold, mm -hmm. right? because there's not enough sand, not enough dirt to create the greenery, even though they have drip system under, uh, under those, they, they don't come green. And you can cut a tree, and put it in as a, as a fire and it burn just as, as well as, as, as a um, dry, dry tree. And so when I come east and I come to Jamaica, what I love to see is the green. It's a different type of green. It's like a, what we call hunter green. That is as a lot of heart, yeah. you know? And, and it's the same way that when I look at the, the cockpit country, I look at that heart, it's, it's green. You know, I, I love it. I love it so much. So, um, and you 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 broke my heart when you said um, Jamaica is a land that we only kind of like. We're gonna kind of like. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so um, sometimes I think it's a land we don't like very much. Let's let's change that. Yes. Let's, let's change, change that. Because it's our home. Yes, it you is. You know, yes. I lived away for thirty years. Where's yes. where's home? Is here still home? What you have to say? Yeah. Listen, we come, here, we come here too often. I have to stop tell people that I'm coming, you know, because I don't get jealous. Yeah. Yeah. But it's home, right? It's, it's home, it's home, home, home. That's the only place I call home. I say, I say yeah. I have to love where you live. Yes. And you have to love where you're from. Thank you very much, Dan. Thanks very much for the video. And I promise you that this, this video is going to go right across. And I'm going to be a champion on getting people to sign up. Thank you so much. Carpet Country, thanks. Carpet Country, thanks. Carpet Country! Since it called you. Yeah, he called me! He did, did call me. Thank you for watching the, uh, the video on Save the Cockpit Country. It is a significant thing. This, this, this should not be on a petition, however it is. So I hope you have learned as much as I have. I've learned that uh, the Cockpit Country provides 40% of the water uh, on the west coast of Jamaica. And also it has 32 streams, tributaries that lead into four major rivers, including the Martha Bray and the Great River. So, um, you know, I hope you, you enjoyed this video. We have several other videos coming out. Uh, please follow us on leogilling.com and on jamaicans.com on Facebook. Uh, jamaicans.com on Facebook page and also leogillian.com. Thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day now. Bye-bye.